Good morning, welcome to another day in the life. It's peak week, we've got ice baths. It is like 30 degrees outside. Uh, 32, somewhere in there. Anyways, three minutes of this hell, so we're gonna jump in and get it done. I'm wearing clothes, you might be asking, why are you wearing clothes? No one wears shirts on these, John. Show me your chest. Well, here's the reason. It's because I don't like the frostbite that water less than 30 degrees gives you. Like this freezer burn on your chest, I'm not here for it. So this helps with that. It does not make it any warmer, I promise. Sometimes it makes it worse, but the initial contact does not hurt my skin, so. There are days that, the only thing I really like ice baths, there's a lot of health benefits, but it's just like, some days you just don't want to do it, but you do it anyways. getting in just sucks and then also I already get really cold circulation or really bad blood circulation in my fingertips and the tips of my feet like I just do like they've always been notoriously cold like running in the cold hurts my hands um, and so like right now I try to keep my hands under here for the entire time but sometimes I take them out because it is quite painful Right now they hurt quite a bit, but another thing is just, you gotta learn to relax. Like my, I, I carry all my stress in my traps, and then I can feel it when I do ice baths. More so than almost anything other than running. Running, I definitely notice it, like, when I'm running for hours on end, and then I relax my traps. What are you doing? Are you working today? That's horrible. I feel like that, that felt like the Titanic. Except, I'm not Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> and she's not in the water with me. And there's no door. Oh, we're done. Yes. Oh. I already did something hard to start the morning. Let's go. What's up guys? Also, I may do one of those Rode wireless mics. It's gonna be popular right now. And I'm starting to notice just to be far enough away from the camera to get a really good angle. And also, oh yeah, hold on. We learned this last time. We turn on all the lights and all of a sudden, there's no flicker in the screen. It's great. All right, so, peak week. So, how does peak week look nutritionally, training wise? So, training wise, I'm just doing the miles I'm supposed to do. I have eight miles today that I thought I was gonna get done right now, but my wife has to go to class, so we'll probably get it done after that. So, because of that, we're gonna eat our first meal early, um, which is totally typical. Uh, as far as nutrition goes, carbs are not, I don't wanna say higher. I did try to, oh my gosh, so I try to make them higher like Monday and Tuesday, and it ripped my gut i was trying i was experimenting with something i was gonna do like 200 grams a day for like the week and then blah blah, blah. but anyways yeah like yesterday i ate almost nothing my stomach hurt so bad and i'm not gonna say that it was the carbs fault but it could have been because i just don't eat that much i don't eat that much feel much better today uh so we're gonna we're gonna keep it around 100 150 that's where mike likes to be 150 if he gets up to about 250 Anyways, I'm rambling with numbers. Here's the plan, all right? Peak week. We keep our carbs high because we're just trying to replenish glycogen as much as possible so that we can get the most out of our runs during the peak week, okay? Going into the last two weeks, the first two, three days I fast. I do it. The 48, 72 hour fast, I'm just trying to really ramp up fat oxidation. Uh, and then going after that, I will go into a phase of carnivore. I'll be carnivore up until about three days before the race. And then three days before the race, I will slowly introduce 100, go back to where the way we're eating now, just to make glycogen storage or topped off before we start our view. 
uh, our race and our race will be 50 miles long and we'll go into it fasted and then we'll do all the things. So that's what we're doing. Let's make breakfast. What about all of the anti-nutrients in oats? Great question there, sissy. Here is the answer, okay? So first of all, really important to understand here. Uh, one, sprouting is the act of letting the cell walls break inside the plant, which helps with any defense chemicals that would keep you from trying to do that. Secondly, these are sun dried, they're properly dried, which gives time for also removal of the sun to remove any anti-nutrients. Also, if you boil them, you also remove said anti-nutrients. So by the time you actually eat the suckers, you have a clean, minimal plant toxin food that you did have to adulterate, right? You had to cook it and process it to get, this is how natural this is. There's still some of the plant, look at that. There's still some of the oat plant in there. That is not, here, get out of my face. No, focus on the finger. Focus on the finger. Look at that, look at that. Still a piece of oat plant. Oh, there's two. Anyways. Yes, it's not like uh, an organic fruit that's minimally invasive and it's completely good from the start, but a lot of foods, I mean, would you eat a raw organic potato? A lot of y'all wouldn't even eat raw meat and all you do is eat meat. So we all adulterate something. So something I wanna show y'all real quick. Now this is something we can definitely talk about more later, but I've been trying this new L-carnitine, okay? It's a particular kind, so it's called liposomal L-carnitine. So I tried L-carnitine, I showed y'all that in my supplement video, and I found out that acetyl L-carnitine is not as good as L-carnitine tartrate. In fact, they're very different in terms of their effects on fatty acid metabolism and stuff. Basically, I wasted my money. Uh, it was good for my brain health for that month, but it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do. So I went looking for, I even considered injecting L-carnitine, which is technically legal. It's in within the WADA, all that stuff. It's just needles, obviously scream steroid, and I don't want to stab myself. I wasn't about it. So liposomal L-carnitine absorbs up to 88%. It's a particular kind of formulation. Um, I've been taking it every day for like four days now. I haven't noticed a crazy difference, but... Anyways, <clears throat> apparently it absorbs up to 88%, but the average oral L-carnitine only absorbs up to 10%. So huge difference is it there's studies apparently on it apparently they have a bunch of things that they've done to prove and pro, prove this we're gonna find out but if you're interested in l-carnitine and you're worried about absorption rates apparently that's a better option to be d say good morning Haley. morning see how are you doing what are you doing i'm jumping i'm jumping you what i jump. You're jumping? Can you show everybody your jumps? Show them your jump skills. Beautiful. I'm sure for her, this feels so in that, See that jump right there probably felt so intense. All right guys, so making pancakes for Haley, I am definitely having some because, well, it's pancakes, duh. Uh, pancakes are the universal language. I just wanted to make that clear real quick. So, uh. Like keto carnivore, low carb, plant based. We all have pancake recipes. It is a universal language of love. All right guys, last meal of the day, well the main meal, we'll have hot chocolate at night as we always do, as is tradition. But we've got some core keto chow with blueberries. You'll notice I do have some quicker foods on days I'm super busy like today. Like we have some uh, gluten-free real good nugs and some gluten-free dino nugs because, well, Haley had them, so I'm gonna have them. Uh, but I typically avoid gluten at all times, no matter what, whether I'm doing high carb or keto, doesn't matter. I don't eat keto bread, I, I don't eat gluten. Uh, and on my higher carb days, I tend to try to avoid dairy. If you notice, there's no, there's almost no dairy in any of my diet today. Um, I just don't like mixing the two, personal preference, but. So we're watching Untangled eating nuggies it's a good day all right what's up guys uh so didn't show dinner here at the final macros for the day we had this broccoli thing which made me bloated i'll tell you 
I'm not like all fully against plant matter, but like so there's something about broccoli. Sometimes I decide to eat it and I instantly regret it, always. Um, wasn't able to get the eight miles done. I'm not gonna go into the details on why that didn't happen, but instead we got four miles done and we got a 15 minute Tabata workout in. The workouts are getting lighter and lighter as we get into the peak because especially I'll probably have, I'll have no more heavy days. My last heavy day was on Monday. And then Monday and Tuesday next week, I'll do 15, 20 minutes of light Sabata work. And then I'll be done till my race. Um, I didn't do that last time. I did it all the other times before it. And I was just like, oh, I can handle it. But I'm telling you, getting off the weights about a week before the race at least can do wonders. And I'm talking about even like blood flow stuff. Like you can stretch and like foam roll, but like exerting yourself on the weights, it's just... Not worth it, man. Save the energy. Trust me, you will. If you're worried about something, you'll get it all out on race day. Believe me. All right. See you on the next one.